Report reached me that a migrant that had landed on a beach had gone into somebody's house. I posted this to find that Kent Online said my claims had effectively been debunked. Well, we spoke to the Kent police about this and as to why Kent Online had published this. And Kent police said, for guidance, a man is reported to have made a request to use a phone at a property. No offences have been committed. He has been dealt with by immigration officials. And then they come back and say, Kent police received a report at 10.45 a.m. on Sunday that a man had entered an insecure door at a property in Dover, requested to use a phone. He was initially arrested and then de-arrested at the scene. So we've got the Kent police effectively covering up, at least as I see it, what went on, leading to an inaccurate news report about me and Kent online, which I'm pleased to say has now been corrected. So let's get the proper story. Let's go right now to the village of Acliffe, which is where this happened, and let's talk to Sue Doyle, who was the resident involved. Sue, a very, very good evening to you. I know you're there with Louise, your neighbour, um, who was involved in all of this. Just tell us very briefly exact the truth, exact, because it's been so confused by some of these media reports and police statements. Please tell us the truth of what happened on Sunday morning. I was sitting having a cup of coffee. I'd opened the back door to let the dog go into the garden. And then the dog came in. I thought, I'll finish my coffee and then go and shut the door. And then next minute, this lad is in my front room. He told me, because the dog was barking at him, he told me I've got to shut the dog away, which I did. And then he didn't ask to borrow my phone. He demanded my phone. Gosh. And, and I mean, I, I'm guessing that at this moment in time, you must be pretty scared. Well, yeah. I was in the house on my own. And, I, I was and like, then Louise... And then your neighbour Louise got involved in this. <laughs> well, what it was, Sue... Um, came knocking on the door and uh, I opened it and she was in a right state and she kept going there's an immigrant in my house and I'm like eh? like what she goes Louise there's somebody in my house so I didn't even think twice I put my shoes on I yelled up to my partner I told Sue to stay I've gone round there I don't know who's round there all I know it's as a man I've gone guard up gone into the front room Looked into the front room, there's no one there. Looked into the kitchen, no one there. Shouted out, hello, no answer. So I've gone heading upstairs. I've gone, hello. I heard a hello back. So I was like, oh, he's in Emilio's room. So I've opened the door. Emilio is Sue's grandson. So I've opened the door. There is this young lad sitting on the floor, leaning up against the cot with two mobile phones, messaging. I've gone, oh, you're not meant to be here. He's like, not English, not English, no police, no police. I didn't know what I was walking into. And the media has got some kind of confusion that I grabbed him up by his neck. I didn't. I grabbed the scarf and I pulled him up and I screamed, you are not meant to be here. As I'm trying to get him out of the bedroom down the stairs, He's like, no, no, no police, no police. Uh, you phone, phone. I phone, he phoned somebody. I spoke to a woman. We couldn't understand each other. There was a big language barrier. Then he tried to phone in somebody else. And I'm, I'm helping him downstairs. I'm, I'm giving him a little nudge down the stairs. We got outside <laughs> to the, um, outside the front door. I didn't push him downstairs. I just gave him a helping hand. Um, I got outside the front door. <laughs> well, I have to got say, thank you. Door. No, well, thank you to both of you for clarifying this. Louise, I don't know yeah. whether you're very brave or whether you're very brave or very stupid, I'm not sure. Um, but I think, well, do you know what? It is there just a final, <laughs> a final thought from both of you? Living where you do, 
as close to Kent's beaches. Does this mean in future you have to keep the door locked? Yeah, and the schools have to keep the children inside as well when they come over because they go on to the school playground, which is Acliffe Primary School. So the school has to go in lockdown as well. So it's not just us residents, it's the school as well. And the kids are not allowed to go out and play. I think it's ridiculous and it needs to be sorted because this is not the first time it's happened. It's happened on a, um, a yeah. number of times when they come over because they scatter here, there, everywhere. And... Uh, can, yeah. I just well, confirm, uh, can I just yeah. confirm, can I just confirm, I spoke to a gentleman that did some translation and why I was standing outside with this young 16-year-old, because I see his passport, it had a number, May 2006 on it. Um, he, mm. Can I just confirm, he was waiting to get picked up by a blue golf. He demanded I drive yeah. him to Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> It is an astonishing story, but it's also a scary story. And I want to say, Sue, Louise, thank you for giving us a full, unedited account of what happened and what the consequences are for your community, for your village. Thank you very much Please. indeed. Please, may I say before well, there we you are, go... there you are, folks. Please, may I yep. say before we go, Kent Online owes you and the resident of Acliff, i.e. me and Sue, a big apology for saying how fake it was and that they debunked it. Thank you. Yeah, well, they have. They have withdrawn the article. We are heading in the right direction. Thank you.